uh, uh, back then it was used for polo. The British played the polo game. It was called the Old Polo Grounds. It was a no-go area for Ghanaians. But when Kwame Kuma had uh, that date was chosen, this is where actually was declared. Yes, and where the bronze statue is, that's the exact spot he stood to declare Ghana's independence. Fast forward again, um, during the Declaration of Independence, Kwame Thomas said some very important things. One, he said that Ghana's independence is meaningless unless it is tied to the entire liberation of the African continent. He and a few African leaders, uh, were their comrades like Patrice Lumumba, all the belief that Africa in itself holds about 40% of the world's natural resources. And so we should be able to use it to develop our own selves. Yes, and during the Declaration of Independence, he said, today, and if you watch the day of the Declaration, it was so charismatic and very in it. He said, today, the black man will prove to the white man that the white man is, the black man is capable of managing his own affairs. Yes. That the black man is capable, the black man will prove to the white man that the black man is capable of managing his own affairs. And he made a statement. And um, he came out very strong in that Kwame Kuma was, was so charismatic and the way he went about his things put fear in the West. So it has been proven that um, his overthrow, he was overthrown in 1966. Uh, we're that the CIA were the ones who actually overthrew, helped in the overthrow of Kwame Nkrumah. Oh, my God. Yes. And guess who's, who's, um, who was in charge of the CIA at, at that time? Bush. Yes, Bush. And that's the name of the street. The original Bush. No, Bush Senior. Yes. So during the overthrow of Kwame Nkrumah, a lot of things of his were vandalized. Um, the, the statue that he had, um, that was in front of the old parliament house, was vandalized. You're going to see it? Yes. And then also, um, you see, Kwame Nkrumah was so, so much knowledgeable and very, very influenced by Pan-Africanist ideas. He had contact with Du Bois, he had contact with Marcus Gavi, he had contact with Martin Luther King, he had contact with George Padmore. He learned all, from some of the best. All these people were great influencers and mentors to Kwame Nkrumah. So during when Ghana gained independence, he had to invite some of these men to come here to help him in uh, a young Ghana country, um, showing the lights to the world. Again, if you look on our flag, you see the black star. You know the black star, you know where it comes from? Yes, Marcus Garvey. Yes. And you know what it stands for? Hope. Ghana is at the hope of Africa. So how much have it changed since then? On top until now? How much? Yes. Has changed? Yes. I mean have it. Oh, there's a lot of things that have changed. A lot. The things Kwame Kuma did uh, up to now, we benefit from it. No other government have been able to put in place something that has lasted Yes. One important thing is the hydroelectric dam that was constructed on the largest man-made lake in the world. The Bay Ridge, the largest man-made in terms of surface area, that's the Volta Lake. At a time when it was built, the rest of the world thought Ghana wouldn't be able to do it. And today, the place is managed by Ghanaians, was built by Ghanaians, even though there were other contractors from other rest of the world that came in. But it today is managed by Ghanaians. And it's Kwame Kuma's idea was to revolutionize, revolutionize the entire country with power. And that still works. And the one major road that connects the industrial city is the Tema Motorway. Still, we still use it today. And all the things that Kwame Kuma did, there are some factories he built because of um, mismanagement by government and sabotage and all that. Some of these factories had to go down. So Kwame Kuma was did so much. And today we still feel the effect of what um, our forefathers and our past leaders did. So, um, fast forward, um, Karen Kuma was exiled. But when he was about throwing the coup d'etat, he was exiled. He couldn't come back. And so he went to Guinea, Conakry. And there he was 
then later on um, he was diagnosed of prostate cancer where he died in 1972. But one of his moves to unite Africa. So Kwame Nkrumah was part of the founding fathers for what is now the African Union. Previously was called the Organization for African Unity, OAU. And first it was formed by Ghana Guinea Mali Union. And then so um, later on all these things happened. And um, Kwame Nkrumah actually married an Egyptian woman. It was part of his move to unite the North sector of Africa. So, so, so. He I mean, did that really work? Yes, it worked. It did. Oh. Well, the, like the move, it, it went down because of his overthrow. Yeah. He couldn't go, go go that far. So he married an Egyptian woman. Um, so he ended up marrying her marry, marry, marry for no reason then. But it, it, it was a reason because we're well, still today. Well, even though it's hard, uh, we still find the challenges. But if he was, it was there was a reason. You say there was no reason. <laughs> there was a reason. But then. Kwame Nkrumah um, later. I apologize. Off. I meant to say it, it defeated the purpose. Yes. The policy. <laughs> so Kwame Nkrumah, Kwame Nkrumah passed away. Uh, his wife and her um, also is buried here. This place was designed by a Ghanaian. But the sad thing is um, he had Chinese contractors. <laughs> but you will know. You know the thing is you will know. Ghana over the years has been has been partnership with the Chinese. When we go into the muse, um, the museum, you're gonna see pictures of Carmen Kroma. Because during independence, most of um, when Kroma was a lot of things were vandalized and destroyed. So you have pictures that were donated by his family to the park. You're gonna see that. Uh, we can take pictures all over here. When we enter into the museum, we can take pictures, and you will see that Carmen Kroma had relations with China, Russia, Cuba, all these other places. And so, and Ghana is part of what's called the non-aligned movement. Okay, we, 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 we are not aligned to any particular area. We go where people want to come. So the relationship with China is there, way, way back. But now it's, it's it. So this place is designed very well. We're going to come and then we're going to see and experience the place. Um, we'll have a guided tour. Somebody will be here to take us around. After that, you have questions we can talk about in the bus. Before I go, somebody had a question here. Yeah. I don't want to go before the question. Your hands were out. Yes. How is this? Thank you, Mr. Well, I saw it on YouTube with the new resident of Ghana. He was talking about making the downtown area more. I guess it's more nice and uh, yeah, modern. And he sought out a Chinese or a Japanese architect. And I'm wondering why um, we can't connect. Like, there's a lot of uh, black Americans that are architects and engineers and stuff like that. And it's always soft. It seems like it always is pushed for China instead of saying, well, let's find a black person to do it because it's black people all over the world that can do the same thing. And or to do it better, because we know what we like, you know, yeah. versus the Chinese or the Japanese person doing it. So I, and just like you just said, the design is like the Chinese, you know, we, we can do this. Yeah. I should design it. Yeah. <laughs> it was the, the architect's course, the other guy, was designed by a 